Bitcoin office is an office of Bitcoin, coconut, and <laughs> Wagyu meat. That's what we do. Bitcoin means more than just monetary policy. It's a whole, it's a whole way of living. It's a philosophy. It's a way of eating. It's a way of uh, cooking steak. We're going to run the, the seed oil mafia out of El Salvador. So what's the point of uh, just holding uh, Bitcoin? What's the point? Get fucking that. rich, man. That's the point. That's the fucking point. <laughs> what's the second best? There is no second best. There's no second best crypto asset. There's a crypto asset. It's called Bitcoin, right? Right? There is no second best. Bienvenue sur How to Bitcoin. Aujourd'hui, on a la chance de recevoir Mario du Bitcoin Office, tout droit venu du Salvador. Il vient pour nous raconter des anecdotes et des histoires que vous n'avez sûrement jamais entendues nulle part ailleurs sur YouTube ou en podcast. L'idée, c'est de revenir avec lui sur la situation au Salvador, quelle a été l'adoption du Bitcoin et plein d'autres anecdotes. Donc, je vous propose qu'on se retrouve avec lui. On va faire l'interview Victor et moi. Ça va durer plus ou moins longtemps. Et juste avant de commencer, si vous pouvez mettre un petit like et 5 étoiles si vous nous écoutez en podcast ainsi qu'un abonnement ce sera parfait. Je vous laisse avec la vidéo. Hello Mario. Hello guys. What's it going on in uh, Paris? Well, they just kicked us out of uh, <laughs> the gardens of the Luxembourg. Yeah, yeah. But we have our own gardens of Luxembourg here. It's a book about a cat that learns how to play in the violin. And I'm intrigued by it. The same way I'm intrigued about these two guys. Yeah. Like how how's, how's it going man? Like uh how does this podcast go with you two? Like uh, I just realized that it's the two of you. Like it makes the double the fun, I guess. Yeah. Like, for a podcast. So how how are things going? How are things running your podcast? Fine. Yeah, it's going well. We are trying to have uh, better and better people. Even if the the first one was good, but uh, like just to to always improve. To to stop being that that French Men in the water, right? Like to, to get out of your uh, yeah, comfort exactly. zone, to be, to have low time preference. Awesome. Exactly. Amazing. I have guys, a uh, guy like you that's uh, coming from abroad, from El Salvador. With a strong opinion. Yeah. Of course. I mean, if you don't have a strong opinion, you don't have an opinion. Exactly. Like actually. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> if it's not a strong, if it can be melted, it's not an opinion. It's just, you're like, maybe <laughs> you see. So t uh, tell us about you. What what are you doing in uh, in Paris? Who are you? I uh, uh, who am I? Fuck. I mean, you know, like uh, the most difficult and question ever. Um, who I am, like, do like at at which level? I guess um, Bitcoiners, French Bitcoiners, are going to care about the fact that I represent the Bitcoin policy of El Salvador. I. I am aligned within the parameters of the goals of the Bitcoin uh, policy of my president. And that's why I have the job that I have, I guess, you know, and and the objectives and the policy is very simple. It's very um, um, common sense type of uh, policies, Bitcoin maximalism. That's the best way to, to, to describe it. It's just if it's Bitcoin, it's Bitcoin and it's legal tender. And if it's not, it's a cheat coin. And if it's a shit coin, you can make it a legal active, uh, uh, a security, yeah, a legal security. You just have to register uh, or else you're an unregistered security acting in an illegal way makes you a shit coin. That's, that's the whole thing. That's the whole policy. And everything that comes with it, you know, like cast rolls, uh, cast iron against uh, stainless steel, That's the kind of things that we're all about. Yeah. So you're working at uh, the Bitcoin office? Yeah. And for how long have you been working there? I think I started um, in December 2022. Yeah. Pretty much when it was instituted. Actually, it was the 14th of November or something like that of 2022. Okay. And w w what is the, the role exactly of uh, the, the, the office? Is well, to, pretty much... Just to buy Bitcoin every day? <laughs> well, you know... Yeah, that's a very interesting thing. Like um, the, the the first thing to start to understand uh, what's the role, what do we do? It's to understand how the whole government operation of the government works. I keep repeating that um, El Salvador is a startup nation, so pretty much you know there is uh, there's been decades and centuries of history in in corruption and what we call the fiat mentality and bureaucracy you know in every country it's always the same there's always the same type of people the same type of people tend to be politicians 
But the different thing in, in my country is my president. My president is a visionary young person, smart, charismatic, and uncorruptible so far. So what's special about that is that that had allowed him to make things different in a different way and to take advantage of all of that, you know, like uh, first move advantage in, in many areas. One of those areas is Bitcoin. And the same way as in a startup company that's just starting, we tend to work in a basis of uh, what's necessary to do, what's needed from us. So in a startup, like when you watch a documentary about a startup, there, you can always find the CTO wiping the floors or something like that, right? So we do what, we, what is needed for us, from us to do. Sometimes that means to translate something. Sometimes that means to organize, uh, organize a, a, an event, uh, to teach class, have teaching class on things, um, anything, man. Um, giving interviews in France, anything is necessary to better the life of the population of El Salvador through, through Bitcoin and through Bitcoin-related topics and things and people and, and aspects. So what the Bitcoin does, of it does um, pretty much is a, well, legally as a presidential office, which means is like a counseling organization that, gi that gives uh, advice to the president on everything that has to do with Bitcoin. And effectively, what we do is we pretty much oversee if it, if it has a Bitcoin in, in the paper, if it's, it is remotely related to Bitcoin, we need to be aware of it and to see and if it, it operates within the government because there's also, also like the private sector, right? We don't care what happens. We, we care, but we do, we're not going to go and oversee and sneak out to see what they're doing all the time. But if it has to do with the government, if it has to do with the Ministry of Education, if they're teaching something, if it has to do with Bitcoin, we need to be like, yeah, sure, that's the good thing to teach uh, or no, you're, tra you're teaching trading to, to five-year-olds or something like that because there's people that actually try to do that that thing they have that mentality that they want to create traders forex mm -hmm. meme coin traders like from the beginning and they that's how stupid these people are they think that they are going to create this financial revolution the whole world is going to be trading in in in, in, in meme coins since the, since kindergarten and then everybody's going to be rich you know like mm -hmm. of course of course everybody's going to be a millionaire man And, you know, you're, you're not going to be able to buy bread, but you're going to be a millionaire. So that's what the Bitcoin office does. Like, we just make sure that uh, shit doesn't go south, pretty much. Like, uh, we just keep things uh, safe for the, for the country. Because we're the Bitcoiners, and Bitcoin is such a new thing. It's difficult to, for bureaucrats in the government to understand what, what it is. So that's... That's what we do. We're the Bitcoiners trying to help an actual nation state to adopt it, to use it, to have it in its balance sheet. And, what we, and that's what we do. Yeah. Okay, okay, interesting. And you're working with uh, some um, famous people at the office? Of course, Stacey. everybody's famous. Yeah. In it. <laughs> Dude, if he's famous, they work. If they're good famous, in, or, not like R. Kelly or something, but like if they're like good famous, they're going to end up working for President Bukele because that's the goal. Uh, we are creating a nation right now. We are attracting the best and the brightest from the whole world to create the new uh, renaissance. And we're going to make it in different ways. Um, everybody is attractive to the image of the Presidente. And we are creating the paradise for entrepreneurship and uh, creative people. And it's just starting. So, yeah. And is it going well? Amazing. Okay. Like, I mean, I, you know, the biggest problem is that we have too many options. <laughs> it's like, um, it's like when, I guess when you're young and you try to figure out what you're going to do in your life and, and you are lucky enough to, you know, I don't know, maybe have the support of your parents or something and be like, I mean, what do I do, right? Like, you, if you have too many options, that becomes a problem because it's difficult to decide for some to settle for something. So, and, and, and 
But thanks to the fact that philosophically we have the philosopher king, we have very clear that the thing to settle for, it's the absolute best one. Sometimes the absolute best option looks difficult to get, looks like almost impossible, but we don't think in a in that way. We, we, we simply look at the best, absolutely best possible outcome of what we're doing, and that is what we are aiming for. What is the absolute best? Well, become like um, something similar like to what the whole world looks to uh, Singapore or Switzerland. So we want to combine those two ideas of like a super sovereign, you know, like a banker, banking, uh, financial um, uh, nucleus con- type of country and also a super high, uh, high tech development, uh, AI focused also type of government in in America, in the continent of America. So that's that's our mission. And uh, I mean, if you have like a, a, a suggestion, on like a, an even better one, like just tell me and I'll tell the president mm-hmm. and be like, yeah, let's go there, man. We want to create like the best and, and we're aiming for that. So, so you, you're aiming for a country as free as possible? Yeah. Because like Switzerland and uh, Singapore and all the, those yeah. countries, are known at the beginning at least for yeah. how they are free. At the beginning. And so, yeah. Yeah, Switzerland so it's it, kept uh, its, its freedom for quite a while. But, you know, it, it, it has to do a, sh- a ton with the, with, people's, uh, uh, with the people itself. You know, the, the, the Swiss people are actually lovers of, uh, of sovereignty. You know, that is, that is a challenge in El Salvador. Uh, I mean, that's not something you change in one generation. I think you change it in like three. Maybe if we keep the, the way we're going, maybe in a hundred years, I think everybody in my country is going to become the type of people that the Swiss people kind of is, you know, like super loving and respecting of, uh, of their own sovereignty. It's it's funny what you're saying because m- most of the time we think that uh, the kind of revolution is coming from the bottom. Like, mm. like people are just uh, annoyed of the the pressure, the kind of the the socialism. Mm. But you are saying the contrary. Like the the people are looking for help, are looking for yeah, uh, not being know. sovereign, and now y- you have to force them. <laughs> To become kind of uh, free and uh, understand that the yeah, life yeah, can yeah, be yeah. Uh, that, that's, as good or That's better. the specific thing about like interviewing a Salvadoreño, an actual Salvadoreño, not just a Bitcoiner that goes to El Salvador. Like I know my people, mm-hmm. you know, I know what we are all about. In the 70s, there was the communist revolution. You know, like it's not like we're not sick of all the shit that happens to us. It's not like we're, we're not like super tired. It's, that is not the thing. The thing is that we always need a leader. There's so there, there's always the need for someone to take the initiative to do something, and people like I mean most people, and this is true in the whole world, like they they need someone to follow, and if there's like no one to follow, um, which has been the the purpose of the U.S. In, in the in the whole world, like if there's some if someone comes up to, to be followed, they pretty quick. That's why we protect our president so much. That's, uh, and, and so President Bukele became that person. He has very specific, uh, ways of looking at things. And he is definitely creating the, the, now that he's president, even before that he was president, he's creating this revolution. <coughs> and yes, it definitely feels like from the top down or like we don't even look at tops or downs or like we don't even have left and right anymore that's that's a thing that I'm, i've been telling everybody here like we legit do not have a left and a right anymore and all the the, the topic the political discussion in europe and in the whole world is left or right dude like that was the big like, that's insane like because i know it like we had an extremely strong left and extremely strong right in el salvador before and in, in president bukele just in Ali hated them like they they don't they don't do not exist they and that's that's in, insane mm. so we from a european perspective uh we can think 
as the, that kind of situation as uh, like the the prison just uh, like bro blow everything up mm -hmm. and now there is no uh, counterparty but you're saying that it's not the case that just I mean you know it's it's not that you know the the thing one thing that I that I that I mention sometimes when I when I refer to um to Europeans in the topic of El Salvador is that they just don't care enough and I mean it's super fair enough it's like I mean I don't care enough about a bunch of things in the whole world mm. I, I need to care about my country first, and s most people don't even care about their own politics and enough to 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 understand them very well. And it's re it's really like for anyone that kind of cares, it's not that difficult to understand what happened. Like uh, President Bukele didn't blocked or put in jail no one politically at all. Like, dude, the reason why pol polarization exists is because it's, it's just uh, um, it's just as a strategy of the oligarchs to control you like that's as simple as that they don't give they don't give a fuck i have spoken to the richest people in my country they don't care they don't care about like ideals all they care is about is about keeping their asses uh together is they, they only care about them keeping the little or the lot that they have that's all they care about like rights um their property rights um so the population simply like they always side with one side or the other. It's so remarkable how much in, right in the middle is, and it's just a personality thing almost. And and they go left or they go right, and then they fight. And it's the same with football. It's like so obvious, you know. It's like it's two big teams and they fight like. It. And so, President Bukele, what he did is he created a a persona and an idea that was not depending on the idea of being left or being right, but to, of having common sense, which is to care about the people. Because, but actually delivering, like the actual delivery of, of your promises, that is like, 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 like the, the monster of, of Lake Lugano, man. You have never seen it. <laughs> you didn't even know that it existed. And because it, it doesn't happen because you, you can have you can be the president but you might not have the congress and and it's just a, an eternal fight like that's politics you know mm. and of course we don't want to go back to kings and stuff maybe but you know like it just it's just so much useful to have one person um deciding things because things get done ha that's how we've been able to to evolve so fast in my mm. country because we have a little bit more of a centralized taking of, of decisions. Because at the end of the day, like, it's pretty much common sense, the, the thing that you should decide. You know, like, yeah, most decisions are easy to make. But there's always going to be like a, a percentage that is going to be like, no, you should, we should do it this way. And there's going to be an eternal fight. So the left and the right and the, and the opposition, they just kill themselves. Like, they, they, they never delivered. Nobody trusted them. President Bukele, what he did, he, he gave a figure. He became a figure of trust. So people trust him. So no one voted for, for, for no one else. So there is no, no one never, none of the organisms that criticize us all the time had ever said nothing bad about our, our election process. It's totally democratic. Like there was no in, like influence or anything, nothing. And, and he was voted 85%. 85 fucking percent like that doesn't happen mm. 92 percent 93 percent of the population said that they liked his uh his presidency like they they they're okay with everything he did and still like seven percent didn't vote for him but 85 did and uh that is why he's, he's, he's just a merit and you know that the way that they're trying to criticize us now is just based on they are saying that he's confusing people that's his 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 crime. He's confusing people. He's manipulating the masses. Every fucking in, politician in which ever. Way? Huh? In which way? Do like by 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 saying words and by 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 making my country the safest country in the Western Hemisphere. They literally they are so insane and like ill in their heads that 
by him actually doing the thing that he's supposed to do, they say that that is a bad thing. He sh because if he does, he has too much power. The argument is that he is too good. <laughs> and that, that, so it's that gives me too much power and too, too much trust. That is literal, the literal argument. Because these people are crazy, man. Like, have you heard what they, what yeah. they say? Like, like the, 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 the mainstream media. They're going to create, like, it's insane, like, like the Trump thing, like the <laughs> Caesar injured <coughs> during group hug. Do you saw that meme? Like, mm -hmm. you know that they kill Caesar. And so the, the CNN says, like, the Caesar got injured during a group hug. <laughs> they, something happened to Trump. We don't know yet what, what, what it was, mm -hmm. but something, what, something happened. He got injured during, yeah. during shooting. Yeah, I saw it. <laughs> That's what I mean. Like they're going to create a narrative that is just stupid. And, and people, because people only read uh, headliners, that's what they're going to get. Like, where are they going to get their information about my country? They're going to see a headliner saying, Presidente Bukele, through 85 allegedly gang members into, into prison, 85,000. Mm. It's not that difficult to identify yeah. a gang member, man. And maybe before going deep dive in the situation now and what is done, maybe for the people that are looking, because in the mainstream media, you mentioned it, we have a lot of opinion of what Bukele did in Salvador. Uh, we heard a lot. Uh, some are saying he's a dictator. Some are claiming the human rights and so on. We, we made an interview with Agelex and he gave his point of view, maybe he's more or less the same with you as you, but c can you just describe what was the situation before Bukele? Oh, yeah. How, because you were living in Salvador, yeah. because... I've before lived my whole life there. Okay, so... I've never left. Maybe you can testimony yeah. and, and can just say what was the situation as a Salvadorian before Bukele? Yeah, I'll give you the rundown. Um, first of all, he's the coolest dictator in the world, <laughs> number one. Man, well... You know, this guy did say that they wanted to do four hours, so I'm going to explain to you. <laughs> I'm going to explain the living shit out of you what, of what happens in El Salvador. 1490... I forgot. I think it's 1494. Maybe. If it's not, it's 1498. I'm sorry, class teachers, history teachers. But 1494, Christopher Columbus gets to uh, an island... I think they called it Nativity, Christmas, yeah. because they got their Christmas Day, I think. So they discovered America. Well, pretty much there were uh, like three big empires at the time. Um, so we had like a, like a culture, we will, we will like uh, do human sacrifices, some of us. Yeah, it was a big thing here. And then, you know, Spain came and alienated everything. I mean, for good or for bad. Yeah for both uh, but we didn't have culture we, I'm sorry yeah we didn't have like an identity anymore we became um, slaves to, to Spanish to Spanish people and then the whole all Latinos are like now mixed half Spanish half Native American and um, so that created a very interesting thing called um, well actually the church created this uh this institution called encomienda. Encomienda means that um, any Spanish person, when he goes to the new Spain, to, to America, um, takes on the responsibility to teach the Native Americans the Catholic religion. And in exchange for that teachings, the Native American was going to work for, for, the, for the Spanish person. So he created this system of... Uh, pseudo or total like slavery called encomienda this created a very specific mindset for the Native American because through the centuries we became ex particularly obedient to power, to authority so pretty much Latinos in general tend to be very respecting and acknowledging and uh, of, uh, of authority in many ways that authority looks like blue eyes blonde hair you know it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's legit like kind of works like that way especially in El Salvador 
El Salvador is a very particular uh, country within the Latin American region for our traditionalism. We tend to be way more traditional than other countries in Latin America, even within the within the within the Central American region, because of violence in the last 30 years, my generation in particular. Um, because legit, we, we hear stories about, about our parents in the 70s having way more freedom than us in the 90s and in the 2000s because of violence. Because, you know, like most people might have heard, like the gang started in, in LA and then um, Clinton, Bill Clinton started to send them back and they just created this insane phenomenon of uh, ill human beings it was like a con it was an, a mass hysteria type of like contagion of, of 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 ideas and when i say that a gang member is an imbecile i'm like for like actually like you could not have a sensical um conversation with a gang member like you you have to like you have maybe you can put like a second of a conversation here of a, with a gang member of because many French actually French journalists went and interviewed them in the way they think, the way they they express of themselves and you know, yeah they grew up in that in that environment whatever but you know like they were ill completely. Mm. Um, so what was going on in the in two thousand and twenty? When did we start the the process? 2022. 2022 in March, um, President Bukele had been quite successful in getting uh, violence down, like quite a lot. And, you know, there were a bunch of speculation on why was that the case. And uh, one of the one of the speculations was that there was a deal with the gangs because the previous presidents and politicians had done something like that and um and uh, the thing is that in 2000 in in march that that year the gangs were starting to feel well they said that there was a deal the gangs said there was a deal and that the deal was not being like uh uh, honored or something and so they wanted to get back control or something and that was the narrative that they were running and but it was uh, it was a bullshit from them and uh one one day a video comes out saying like uh, address it to the president saying that um they were not going to allow the people to think that the government was the one that had the power in the regions that are supposed to be for the gangs in their in their heads, right? Because when you when you have a gang situation, what happens is that they become the government of that region, mm -hmm. and so they had a monopoly on violence in that region, and so that was the narrative that they that they gave. They wanted to take back control and to show to people who really who's really boss, you know. And so what they did is that during a weekend, they had they did something that sometimes they do, and it wasn't the first time they did that. Like they do it like every like five years, ten years, they go on a rant. They they go they go crazy for a couple of days, and they simply kill whoever they see, like without like a motive, because the point of the, of killing that uh, them is to sh to give a message to the population and to the government that they have the control, and that was the idea. So they kill violently and uh, grossly um, 83 people in like a uh, spare of 48 hours and, you know, in, in, in like um, very gory ways. Mm -hmm. And, um, and uh, so that's like unacceptable, you know. Mm -hmm. So the thing, the thing with the, with the human rights uh, institutions, NGOs, is that you're not supposed to treat gangs as terrorists or as or you're not supposed to take or to treat a region full of gangs as a, as a war zone you know there's like a di difference you need to differentiate between those because in the idea of the of these people you have to somehow try to just contain 
the gangs because they're not military in the interior. But you know, and so just just because of that um, practicality of those concepts being this way, mm. they had they have created in in the whole planet this system in which a government has to follow certain parameters when it's trying to do what the government is supposed to be doing, which is to preserve security. So you are not going to nuke a gang member, for, for example, right? Um, to keep like a super like uh, extreme example. Mm. But, you know, that means that you are hand, your hands are tied behind your back in many ways when you're trying to solve uh, one of these type of problems. And that's one of the f most important things that the president has um, done in a different way. He said no anymore to those suggestions, to those strong suggestions about how to deal with gangs. Because pretty much they were just telling us how to deal with them mm -hmm. without understanding anything about gangs. Actually, like they would send and, and finance journalists to go there and talk to them so they can ha have, have a very better understanding of the phenomena. And a bunch of philosophers go there and to study the problem, but never fixing anything because they never fixed anything. They killed 83 people just like that. And I'm sure the international uh, human rights organizations will, will blame the government on the fact that the gangs did that. Because the gangs are kids that need to be taken care of, literally. Like, that is not like uh, an exaggeration. No, that, that is what these organizations, NGOs, and globalist agenda type of people literally um, think and want. But what are the, the powers of those organizations? Oh, dude, mostly? like what, powers. What could they do? Uh, influence. Like, you, like, dude, like, that's how the world runs. Like, like... Dude, like power, they have the whole power, influence. Mm -hmm. They, how they work? They, they, won't, they won't give you a contract that says, do what I tell you and I'll give you money. Power. No, they are going to suggest it to you. Mm -hmm. They're going to be super subtle and politicians and diplomats know how to navigate this world that way. You get in a meeting with one of them and they're like, look, I work for the UN There's no paper that says that you will never legally link me to the UN. But I work for them. I'm offering you, Mr. Diplomat from this poor country and conflicted country, but that we still have interest on, Mr. Diplomat, I offer you trips to these uh, expensive areas, nice dinners. I offer you the opportunity to collaborate with very wealthy people. And maybe at some point you want to stop uh, working for your government legally and you can just join the private sector while still maintaining the contacts in your government. I offer you all of this. And all I want in exchange is your collaboration for these uh, uh, specific uh, 2030 uh, sustainable goals. Um, and I need you to promote this with the ministers. I need you to, um, I need you to to allow me access into like schools to the to this uh, art project, whatever shit it is. And you get all of this just with your cooperation. And this is just the start of a very long and proliferous uh, relationship between you and me. And. You know, that sounds very logical. I mean, who doesn't want the world to be more sustainable, right? Like, who doesn't want the woman to have all the rights they need or they want? There's a difference there. So, it makes sense. You cannot go to court explaining, yeah, I just wanted to help my country. That's how they work. That's the power they have. Is 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 They won't, you know, of course they have all the power. They have all the money. They print the money. They print the money and then they create uh, artificial demand for it through OPEC or through, well, the fact that it's trusted. So you need dollars to, 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 to do, to, do uh, uh, to exchange things mm -hmm. to other yeah. countries. Like if you print your own money, like they're, they're not going to care. Like if, but if you use dollars, I mean, it's, 
And then those countries have people that are still happy, so they don't make a revolution and overthrow these these unelected uh, officials, and and they influence your country. And, and and it doesn't matter if you win, if you're an elected official or an unelected one, it doesn't matter. Like they still have more money for the next one that's coming. So when these organizations, the power they have is just like it's just suggestions. Like you know, like mm -hmm. like the WHO during COVID, like what yeah. they did, why did the whole world did what they wanted? Who knows? Mm. Yeah. So you you're saying that uh, they are called officials, but there is nothing official. Uh, I mean, with their activity like well, it's always they probably uh, have they, they probably uh, have a UN passport. You know that there's yeah. passport for, uh, for the UN and. But that there is no actual contract or paper or Dude, anything special, life, specific. That's the yeah. thing right there. That's the thing right there. There is people, there is normal people, common folk. They follow rules. They are bureaucrats. They, they, want, a, they want a contract to, to work. And then there is, uh, there is people who are more adventurous in life and they don't need a contract they they understand how their world re really works and it's just by work you can you can become rich and never sign any paper because you simply talk you're good with words you're good with convincing people of stuff like there is so many in netflix documentaries about people that get rich just by talking to people right yeah, like, it's super Epstein. funny <laughs> <laughs> right that's what i mean like there is no you won't find dude That's why they always hide themselves behind the rule of law. Because legally, they are not liable to, to shed. Of course, they're not liable to shed. The, folk, the whole system is made so they're not liable. Mm. You know, it's, that's the thing. Yeah. Okay, and if we move back when Bukele came, um, so the, as you said, the, the situation was pretty hard. And then. What did he do and what are the, the main impact? How is it going now? Can you just explain from the, this event in, uh, yeah, in um, 2022? From, yeah, from Bukele, Bukele pre became president in, the, in 2019. So he, it was like three years into his presidency, which is five years uh, each period, um, that this happened. Yeah, three years, something like three years. And... Um, Well, before being president, he had been like the, the, the major of two cities. He had er eradicated uh, violence in the first city and he did a great job in the second city, but it was the capital city it was a huge, de a, a super difficult to totally er eradicate violence in the, in the capital city. So when the big thing, well, what I was explaining about the, The, these organizations is that they they give you parameters in, on how to deal with these things, and so the parameters were not uh, were not allowing the government to really fix the problem. So what he did in the night when all of these deaths happened is that he called Congress at like 3 a.m. and he asked Congress to give him special powers. Um, to create this exception regime type of uh, uh, thing that is in the constitution, then when we are at war, at war or like there's some some special thing going on. Um, But it's he, it's a kind of war. <laughs> exactly, that's the, the that's the point. Yeah. So the organization, so the international organizations wouldn't 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 say that it's war. Because he's inside of the country, Salvadoreños, and this is unsophisticated people, but of course they're killing people. And, um, and so they wouldn't put it into the place of war, and, and that's the whole controversy you know, right there. It's just, it's just concepts. And so what he did is he got uh, mili the military and the police special powers to just start arresting people. And is it difficult? Of course it's difficult. Isn't it? Of course it's, it, it's, not, it's not ideal. And, um, but it was the only way. That's the most important thing to understand. There was no other way to do it. Uh, when this happened, I wasn't a part of the government. I was just a student, uh, a student that dressed in like long shirts and shorts and sneakers. So 
I felt uh, kind of scared to go out because I knew that they could just arrest me and, and it was going to be like at least a couple of months until like they proved that, that I was not a gang member, even though I don't have tattoos or anything. It might have been like faster with me because I was, uh, I don't know, like there's some common sense way to, to identify a gang member. But I definitely a couple of times felt like, holy shit, they're coming from me or something. But genuinely, any Salvadorian is going to tell you that there was no other way. Like, because the, 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 the other option was to be constantly afraid that you were going to get killed, mm. you know, like yeah. actually killed. And that's a very important part about uh, my generation in my country that we were our whole lives revolved about uh, around the concept of security. You would you could only walk in the very specific areas that you knew to be to be to be uh, secured. Um, and we wouldn't like, that's a, that's a very interesting topic for Europeans that there is not really a party, um, scene in El Salvador. Like young people don't really go to parties. Uh, I never went to parties. Like really, I went to like a couple of concerts, but there's no like a, like a culture of going out at night because at night you have to be at your house and our house are like bunkers. Like you legit cannot get into a Salvador in your house unless everybody finds out like in the whole neighborhood hears it because it's like it's, it's they are built like bunkers we don't have open windows everything is concrete and uh if it's not it makes a lot of sound if you break it so all these nuances create the, the perspective that you need to understand how is that the, my, my population thinks what is it that, that they need and what is it that the president bukele brings uh, President Bukele brings hope, brings a different type of mentality, and it's not that we're we're not sick enough of of the of the other uh, left and right type of politicians, and we wanted we didn't want it to do a revolution. We wanted to, but because of multiple reasons, you know, making a revolution is difficult, and you need a, a, a leader. And we are doing a revolution. We already won, you know, and, and we did it in the absolute best possible way in the cleanest way like we got rid of violence we got a government an actually uh, democratically elected government and it's working amazing like what's going on right now like the, the El Salvador is El Salvador is the most is the safest country in the western hemisphere like last month we had one violent death for every 100,000 people and um, Canada has two Point four deaths, violent deaths for 100,000 people. South Korea has 0 0.6 violent deaths for 100,000 people. We are closer to South Korea in safety net than to Canada, which used to be the safest country in the Western Hemisphere. Mm. That's how safe my country is right now. And right now we're in Paris. And uh, I mean, it's not actually, it's quite safe right now because yeah. we're just right before the Olympics and it's just super there annoying and there's everywhere. way too many policemen. But, you know, like right before, like when I came here like a week ago, I could see, I could feel a, a sense of like insecurity. I mm. spent like, a week and a half, I think, in Lugano, Switzerland. Dude, that week I got there, three days later, there's a fucking shooting in Lugano. In the middle of Lugano, a guy got into like a luxury store and they want to steal something. And the police like, and and fires were shot. The next day there was a fight, a fist fight in a, in a bar. Then and then I realized that there's a bunch of crackheads everywhere, mm. and there's a bunch of immigrants also asking for for money. That 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 doesn't happen in El Salvador anymore. And, and, and the guys were like, yeah, pretty much you, you experience all the violence that happens in Switzerland in one week, <laughs> in the whole year. But in, in, that's like, it's so symbolic. It's mm. so fucking symbolic that I come here from the safest country, being previously two years ago the most dangerous country in the fucking world. We were more dangerous than... You could be safer in, in, in Palestine right now or in Ukraine that when you, if you were in El Salvador, like we had more deaths per capita than them, that war zones. And, 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 and then I, and then we become the safest country. And then I come here to Europe and to Switzerland and, 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 and I see like fucking violence, like 
you know it's it's, yeah. it's, it's like symbolic i feel like at, at many levels like hmm. it, it's crazy I've got just one uh, question related to actuality. Um, there were Trump saying that. Uh, oh yeah, yeah <laughs> super funny. Fuck that Trump. They bookily were, <laughs> were sending the, the thugs into USA. Is it just made up, or Dude, is there Trump, anything? Uh, I don't know, man. What what up, man? What up, Donald? Like what 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 happened? Like who told you that? Like you know, like I don't know. Like all I can think is that you know when you're running for presidency. Somebody maybe told him something. It kind of makes, literally, genuinely feels like a huge misunderstanding. You know, like, because it makes so little sense. Like, our, our immigration towards the U.S. is like new almost right now. It's, it's negative. We're bringing back our, our people that we sent, like, in the, in the 70s and 80s. Everybody's moving back. And we literally build the biggest, uh, jail yeah. in, in, in the continent. And we put everybody there. Um, we're not letting anyone out and sending them to the fucking USA. Like, you, you know what I mean? They're, they're better off if they're bad people. Well, yeah, yeah. But no, like, um, no, like not even good people, man. Like they're better off in the, in the Salvador. So like, I don't know, it literally feels like a misunderstanding, but fuck Trump. You know, until, until not, you know, like until further notice, uh, fuck Trump for now. And uh, now, okay, so we understood what was the situation in the Salvador. Can you maybe explain what was the situation, the economic situation, what was the money used mm. in Salvador, and why Bitcoin came? Well, um, yeah. How, how did you find out about yeah. Bitcoin? What the fuck? Yeah, I mean, damn, I don't have like, uh, no. But yeah, I can explain it. So, El Salvador, very small country, smallest country in the continent. We are called the, the middle finger of the, of the continent because we're so small. Uh, very special, very particular in many areas. Um, and doing my, well, now that I have the job that I have, I have come across a bunch of like things that most people talk about, like, but now I verify that it is the case. One of those things is that apparently, um, there's a bunch of, uh, rich people in Central America that, uh, had their, their legal base, their legal home base in El Salvador. So they pretty much had like all the businesses in the Central American region and a, a little bit of the south of Mexico. And they will legally exist in El Salvador. And, and so because of, they created a banking situation in my country, which was uh, a bunker, let's say, for their wealth. They, um, they pretty much created a situation in which banks had the most, one of the most strict bank regulation um, policies in the whole planet, actually. So it's extremely difficult in El Salvador to get money in and out of the country because it's like hyper regulated. And this is just for the sole purpose of protecting these oligarchs money and interests. So investment was actually quite difficult new investment. Um, and also, you know, if you, if you had money in order to go out and invest in a different way, unless you knew the, the, pe the right people to move the money. So most of our, uh, wealth, uh, came mostly from, uh, remittances. Like I think like around like 50% and then inner consumption of, uh, well, mostly from, mm -hmm. USA, Canada? Totally USA, yeah. And then some Canada and some Europe, but mostly USA. Um, we have a nine, around my nine million people citizens, but only six million live in El Salvador, three million live in the US. So you can imagine how much that is. Um, highly impoverished nation. Um, we didn't have many options other than, uh, well, the best job you could get, like reasonably easy, without a university degree would be a call center and that will give you like a stable source of income like you will die your soul will die because in the call centers like your soul is like you like zombies i did it once it was horrible and uh but you will get at least enough money to to be re to live a respectful life let's say if it's not that you you could like spend five or more years studying something and get a, uh, a degree and maybe try to get like a, a reasonably good job, but it, 
very limited uh, possibilities before. Everything um, prompted and uh, exac exacerbated more for the banking situation, of course, so no new industries emerging at all. Um, all of that is changing little by little, like at the legal, at the legal level where like uh, there's a new bank law, bank, uh, there's a new bank amendment of the law that is going to make it, it's going to make it easier to, to invest in El Salvador, number one. Number two, it's more, well, the simple fact that it's safe. Now, now it means that there is new industries that can be interested in developing their industry in the country. And we just, uh, we're just working hard on, on creating that situation in which, uh, it's safe. It's easy to invest and there is uh, incentives enough to invest. And we create this community of, uh, investment, uh, tech, uh, development and Bitcoin tech development and all the types of Bitcoin development. And we just create this, uh, environment for flourishing of the human, of the human, uh, life um, for our people. Um, so the situation now is that we're, we're we're growing fast, legit, like for real. I think that we could not go faster, like because if we if we went faster, I think we would do something stupid, like uh, car, like the Central African Republic, or any other crypto nation that tried to become Bitcoin country, but they failed miserably, right? Um, like genuinely, I do not think we could go faster. It's just the human beings. We have a, a very short time period in terms of like the whole history of life, of history of humanity in the, in this planet. So pretty much what, when we read history and how so, a big change happened, in general, it happens through like a couple of centuries mm. or at least a century. And we're, we're looking at El Salvador and Bitcoin adoption and it's like, well, the, the, it's been two years. If that's nothing, dude, mm. two years, that's, that's nothing in the, like, and, and all you need to understand to, 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 to understand that is just the concept that you, uh, people overestimate what they can do in one year, but underestimate what they can do in 10. So it's been two years, you mm. know, it's mm. been two and a half years. And, uh, I, be I truly believe that we're going as fast as possible. We are bringing everyone that is uh, significant in the in the Bitcoin ecosystem. Say for Dinamus works for uh, as an advisor to the president. Max and Stacy, Max and Stacy are like the the whole Bitcoin policy in, in in El Salvador. Like you know, like you know what I mean. Mm. And actually, that's partially and actually the most the biggest part of like what I'm doing here, like uh, giving interviews and also looking around in Europe, what up, it's, uh, it's me trying to, to figure out, um, what is that the whole world of Bitcoin is and what we can adopt or better, you know, in El Salvador. And if there is criticism, you know, to be like, I mean, of course, criticize us, but then give us an option, you know, is because we literally are hand tailoring. We're creating a freaking Bitcoin country. And we are doing it based on a decade of cheat posting on Twitter about the fucking governments. You know, like that's the most amazing thing. Mm. A decade of cyberpunks and the gens cheat posting on Twitter about, about anything. And so we're like, okay, you cheat posted about this. Like, okay, so what, what would be like the ideal way that we should be like trying to do? We, we, we do it in a, in a conscious way, you know, like we understand that behind a meme, there is a means, there is a, there's a, there's an idea, there's something that was wrong, there's something can be proved, improved. So we're trying to understand all of that and, and improve ourselves. It's like, that's why we're a startup nation. We are handpicking like the best ideas and we are creating a country, a sovereign nation with all the rights that becomes with a sovereign nation, like like voting in the UN, we have one vote at least, you know, that's the kind of thing. This is a real revolution. The Bitcoin revolution is in El Salvador right now. It's, um, and so that's what's going on right now. And, we are in, in, yeah. And, and just uh, one thing, because we see in other country, for, for example, in Argentina, um, they, are, they will use, they, they are still using pesos and most of the time it is dollar. Um, why does, do you know why Bukele didn't just 
say okay we we will use dollar and because there is a, a gap be, be, between Argentina where they say you can use whatever you want and say Bitcoin is our legal currency mm -hmm. and we will encourage everyone to use Bitcoin, create the Bitcoin office, create uh, all this kind of, of stuff. Do, do you know why he he wanted to yeah to to bring Bitcoin in Salvador and, and maybe how did he meet he met Bitcoin? Oh yeah, 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 yeah pretty much. Um, well, he's a smart person. His dad was a very very smart uh, and recognized type of philosopher in the country. He was a very successful businessman. I understand that he was the first person ever to suit McDonald's and win. And um, in the world, yeah, in the world. Wow, uh, the president said that. And um, so he's smart man. He was a smart man. He died uh, a few years ago. And uh, but his sons are very smart too. And so it's only logical that President Bukele uh, understood Bitcoin uh, at some at some point in history. And, uh, you know, like watching the Kaiser Report like I did. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, like because actually the Kaiser Report, uh, the, the TV show run in the Russian television, RT, was actually the most popular international show in, in uh, economics uh, in the whole Latin American region, in the whole Spanish world. Okay. And, uh, and so... It was only logical that he would watch the Kaiser report and get orange peeled, you know, like in the in the in the most toxic and maximalistic way. And so one day, when was the show running? It was like five or six years ago. The show, the time. show started running, if I'm not mistaken, in 2008 or to, or 2009, the same as Bitcoin started, and. Um, and then they, they mentioned Bitcoin for the first time, I think, in 2011, something like that. And so, but actually the show has been, because they showed that, that the Kaiser Report in, in national television in El Salvador on reruns all the time. Okay. Like uh, national television in El Salvador, what they do is they, they buy chunks of like international shows, especially from Al Jazeera, um, uh, Russian television, and uh, the Deutsche Welle. And so we watch a bunch of Dutch Belle, a bunch of Al Jazeera, and a bunch of Russian television. That's our international look to the world. Okay. So they have, so the Kaiser Report is literally the most popular one of them all. So that's how he got orange built. Um, what happened was that, well, this is the story, that um, there was this town in El Salvador. And it was a it was a beach town, and in El Salvador we like we're not surfers, we we don't have that culture like pretty much not at all really not locals at least, and there there was this town that it was like a hidden gem, for surfers in the world, and actually I used to go there with my family like 15 years ago, and the reason why is was because it was empty all the time. And the only people there will only be like um, blonde Swedish people, you know, like surfers. And that was like very particular about, about that town. And so we just w used to go there like every once in a while. And this story says that one night a couple of surfers wanted to have dinner, but they didn't have any money, any cash, any coins, any physical cash. And uh, they asked this uh, woman that makes pupusas, pupusas is a national dish of El Salvador, if they could ask if they could pay with Bitcoin. And she was like, she was like super like relaxed and whatever. She was like, yeah, sure, I accept anything. Yens, euros, dollars, what's Bitcoin? And they explained it to her and she started accepting Bitcoin. And pretty much she just started and then the whole Bitcoin economy came out of, of that interaction and at some point one anonymous donor gave a bunch of bitcoin to the local ngo that it was called hope house it was an ngo for education of the local kids and and they gave a bunch of bitcoin and the objective was to just share it around to create a circular economy on bitcoin and that's what happened and apparently like a, a few years later um 
depression became interested in it and uh it, it was news in the in the whole bitcoin world that it was a small town in el salvador that became the first circular economy on bitcoin and then jack mallers went there and then everything collided together and then next thing you know you you have jack what's up jack <laughs> uh, crying on 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 the stage and in miami in the bitcoin conference so and and that's that's how it happened and uh and then you know the the video of making making bitcoin a legal tender in el salvador like that was i was i was i was like i watched that and i was like i was i was in my room on my on my on my desktop it's just so fucking vivid it's amazing i couldn't believe it like and 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 that's what the side path that i can like start telling you how i got into bitcoin like pretty much I was uh, a very bad, um, I didn't care about studying too much in like academic studying. Like I never care about uh, grades and stuff. So I pretty much wouldn't sleep when I was in high school. So instead of sleeping, I would go and watch TV. And at 2 a.m. in El Salvador, any, the only thing that you can watch is pretty much the Kaiser Report. So those were reruns and stuff. And, you know, when you're like 19 or 21 years old, like you're trying to figure out the world. You're trying to figure out what everything is so fucked up. Mm. And, you know, and so, and, 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 and nothing was satisfying that need in me to figure out why the world was the way it was. But then out of, out of the sudden, like there was this, uh, this crazy guy sh- screaming at the TV, you know, like uh, going nuts, you know, like, uh, making stunts on Jamie Dimon being a tapeworm, you know, and coming out of an asshole, of, uh, <laughs> Jerome, Jerome Powell's asshole or something. And I was like, fuck, I think I'm going to base my whole life in the teachings of this mother flipper. And I was like, yeah, I'll do it. And I did. <laughs> and, 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 and that's the thing, you know, it's like, it's insane. Like, life is crazy. I, I couldn't stop watching the Kaiser Report and agreeing with what Max was saying and being like, fuck yeah, that's exactly what hap- is happening. Because Max knows how, how it works. He was a, an options and stock trader in the, a broker in in New York in 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 the in the in the in the late eighties, you know, and early nineties, and, and and he knows how how the machine works, how he knows how the beast operates. So he was giving me all this valuable information that I will never get in school, and I did that for a decade, and then I was like, well, I guess I I know I kind of understand of macroeconomics and geopolitics now. That's a ama- that's an amazing thing to 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 understand, and no, you cannot under you cannot learn that from from a, from a formal school. Mm. You have to be interested in it, and and so I did. And and one day I was like, you know, like the 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 strategy of life. You know, I was twenty years old, like trying to find my my way into life, and 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 I was like, fuck, man, life is going sh- to shed, like whatever. But I was, I was still positive. I was still trying to visualize. I was still trying to be positive and work in whichever way I, I could to make things work and life be prosperous and happy and all that. And, and one day, like I was like watching, watching the, the Bitcoin conf and, 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 and Jack Mallers comes with that. And I was like, what the fuck? Mm-hmm. What the holy fuck? I couldn't fucking believe. I cannot believe it right now. Mm. For all I know, I'm 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 dead or in a comatose state. I hit my head that that morning, mm. and I'm just dreaming. You know, I've been dreaming for like three years now, and and that's reality. It, it was three years ago. It feels like a decade ago. Mm. We've we've done so much in the country, and it's only been three years. Like things got built, got destroyed. We rebuilt them again bigger. Like we did all kinds of stuff. And that was 2021 Bitcoin conference, mm. Bitcoin conference in Miami. And uh, yeah, the the law passed, and uh, you know something that you need to everybody should understand about Bitcoin history is that many times previously to El Salvador, there have been jurisdictions in which uh, Bitcoiners had tried to make something similar to Bitcoin legal tender. Uh, one of those is uh, Island of Man, if I'm not mistaken, in, 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 in England. They tried to convince the mayor because the Island of Man is like a little bit of a is, uh, is slightly self-sovereign uh, jurisdiction or something. And then there's this other place that I'm still forgetting. There was a country in Southeast Europe, 
I think it was Serbia. There, that, there that, was Liberland also. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, Liberland. But no, I know about Liberland, but that, that, that's too small, man. No, no, no. There was a proper country in, in Southeast Europe. Uh, I think it was Serbia that they made a law, like making pretty much super easy and no taxes for any tech company. Mm. So all the cheap coin companies moved there, but also all the Bitcoin companies. And they tried to, to, to run everything from that country. But then there was so many scams and so many uh, bankruptcies that they pretty much simply kicked out and expropriated all the all the uh, everything that had to do with Bitcoin and crypto, or whatever. And so, pretty much, the whole uh, hyper sophisticated uh, Bitcoin uh, investment uh, group, let's say the good ones, were. They are very reluctant of uh, of any new jurisdiction trying to do a Bitcoin legal tender type of thing because they have learned uh, the hard way that they can lose a lot of money if they get if they get to the wrong jurisdiction. So, so actually, um, verifying is a huge part of, of any Bitcoiner, right? So when that happened, pretty much, I think Jack Mallers was the biggest. Um, um, name in Bitcoin that it was uh, supporting El Salvador, you know, at least at, ver- at the very early first stages. And then right away, I guess, uh, Max and Stacy uh, at some point decided to go to El Salvador to go check it out. And they came, they met the president, and, you know, little by little, they uh, they they simply became the what, what we are right now, the Bitcoin office. And, uh, well, when they got to El Salvador, I was like... Oh, that's a that's a very interesting story. So I'm pretty much like uh, like a very particular individual, and uh, I believe in a lot of stuff. Uh, I, I run my life in a certain way, and one of those things and ways and stuff is that I meditate and I visualize. I believe in the law of attraction and a law of vibration, in the feeling, you know, the vibes of everything, and to have an intuition. And you know, it's just intuition, really. It's not nothing magical about it. It's just intuition, having a good intuition and developing it. And so, pretty much, I have these uh, beliefs and that if you uh, want something, you can get it. You just have to work extremely hard to get it. And the difference between someone that succeeds in, in in a project and someone that doesn't is how much work are they willing to put into that project. So I at and and. And to make sure that you succeed in your projects, you have to really want that thing. And the only way you can really want something is if it's the thing that you are meant to do. And the way to figuring out what you're meant to do is to know yourself. So to meditate and to know your heart and shit and stuff. So pretty much I meditated for a very long time. And then I, at some point I was like, uh, so what do I want to do with my life? And what would be the absolute best thing I could do? Like without like prejudgment or like without thinking like, oh, that's too difficult. That that's never going to happen. And, and so without oh, none of that, I was like, okay, so I think the best thing that I could do to start my professional life in this planet, it's to be Max Kaiser's assistant. And I said that in 2014. And in 2014, Nayib Bukele wasn't even like the major of the first city that he was major of, I think. Or maybe he was just starting to be the major. And Bitcoin law is is in 2000, is in 2021. Mm-hmm. So how many years before? Seven years. Uh, seven years before. And by the way, uh, there was no Bitcoiners in El Salvador. I was the first Bitcoiner in El Salvador. I was trying to find Bitcoiners in my country in 2021. I'm sorry, in 2011 or something or 12 on Facebook. And all I could find is a Forex trading group. That's all the people that knew how what Bitcoin even was back then. So um, I had this idea like I, want, I need Max and Stacy to go to El Salvador and hire me. And I am a 24-year-old no one in the most dangerous country in the world. I don't have any money. How the fuck is that? How is that going to work? That doesn't make any sense. Nonetheless, I decided that. I defined it in my head. And then when the Bitcoin law passed, what do you think I thought? Like, oh, okay, so I'm fucked. I'm, uh, like, like, I can do anything I want. And I really need to be sure of what I want. Because once you get it, you better, you better like uh, keep it and nurture it because it's freaking difficult to do to do what I do. It's like it requires so fucking much. 
but you know I wished for it and now I have to be like I have to have my balls in in place and be like okay so is in and is the same for all the bitcoiners like bitcoiners were it were bitching around about governments being unfriendly to bitcoin now we we have a government you can do everything you can do in any other government in any other jurisdiction start any type of company that you want that is bitcoin related we will protect sovereignty and we'll we'll nurture it now are you going to do it you know like that's the thing like we wish for stuff but we really need to be sure that we want that stuff because if if we get it we need to be ready and so they got to el salvador and i was like holy shit like, what does a young person think or feels when, when they envision, like, envision, like, have a visualization of something super impossible to happen? What are two rich billionaires going to do in El Salvador? And, you know, like, that doesn't make sense. And then it happened. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what do I do now? So for a full year, they were there. And uh, I never tried to, like, actually reach out or, like, I, because I knew that it was meant to be so one day they brought jimmy song for you know jimmy song mm. they brought jimmy song to give a, a coding bootcamp um a course for bitcoin so i applied and i got in and then i met them and then i'm here talking to you too guys and so it's like uh yeah you want something define very well what you want and work for it but you have to be sure man like it's it's like when you get married like do you really want to marry her you need to be sure hmm. and because once you're married it's yours and you have to take care of her hmm. so that's the kind of thing so yeah that's pretty much um yeah. how it happened how the bitcoin law passed well the, the bitcoin law passed and the president actually jumped into a twitter space and he told all the Bitcoiners, look, we are creating a legal framework for Bitcoin to be respected as a currency and to be used. Now, it's the Bitcoiners' job to go to El Salvador and do all the crazy things that they've been talking for, for a decade. And that is the policy on that regard. Because uh, I, ha I met the, a guy from Bull Bitcoin yesterday or two mm. days ago. His name is Theo. Yeah. And... Uh, I was explaining to him that um, in in Costa Rica, where bull Bitcoin exists, if uh, let's say that you you buy Bitcoin and and you want to buy a hat, a very beautiful, cool plus hat, and you buy it on 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 Facebook Marketplace or whatever, whenever you buy it, and and you pay for it in advance, and then you get scammed. They don't give you the hat, and then you go to the police. And then you're like, hey, I bought this cab. It was never delivered. I think I got scammed. And they were like, okay, I, I ju we just need to look at the, at the, at the payment um, information to make sure that there is a case here. And I'm, say I'm telling this because I have heard the stories. I, 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 I know for a fact that this is what they do. They, when the guy says, oh, yeah, 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 this is, I pay with Bitcoin. They're like, oh, okay, okay, okay. So you need to go to the Ministry of Bitcoin and they will solve this for you. Now, Costa Rica doesn't have a Ministry of Bitcoin. They were making fun of the guy. So the point of making Bitcoin legal tender in El Salvador is not to force anything on no one. It's to create a legal framework in which a customer is... is, is uh, it's... Um, is being taken care of is uh, mm. is protected in the in the way that any other person using any other currency is protected because mm. the government is supposed to put the rules of the game and the game says that if you pay for something you get it but if you use bitcoin then yeah. that's internet magic internet money man like yeah, you have to. What, what are you telling me you're telling me that you created a, a coin and you pay with it and you want me now to go to this house to this guy's house and get a and get a and get and get the product that you bought with this like magic internet money that you got like you know what i mean mm. so yeah it's it's not a point of no we 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 created the legal recognition of bitcoin 
for it to exist. That is the important thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you need to, as a state, you need to, if you consider it as a currency, you need to, to have the the power to apply the law as it is yeah. dollar or something else. So it yeah. makes sense. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, we already made some video with Theo. So, hey, Theo. <laughs> we made two podcasts with him. So we know Dude, really. he's so fucking smart. Yeah. You know, like... A like, lot. Like, you, like it's very stereotypical to think about the... the uh, I'm not saying this in, as an offense, but the, the typical... Um, Parisian bourgeoisie, yeah, um, it's hyper educated, like, uh, mm. like uh, I don't know how I'm so, I'm so, I'm so smart. We were but saying those, there, we are calling them Bobo, Bobo, <laughs> dude. Like, he's so fucking smart, I couldn't believe it. Mm. You know, I was like, damn, that's I get it now, you know, like, <laughs> I understand. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he's smart, he has a lot of things to say, and yeah, when you talk about economics, but. Not only economics, everything with him, mm -hmm. you understand. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> yes, one of the the big projects right now in El Salvador that we have talked a lot in France, uh, at least, or in Twitter, <laughs> it's the Volcano Bonds and the Bitcoin City. The Bitcoin <laughs> City seems to be a big project, maybe too big and too, uh, like... Um, thinking from above as our perspective so what is your view on, on it well well yeah um bitcoin bonds coming soon like always um yeah the bitcoin city well you know it's uh that's the thing you know like that's why i gave a huge explanation on how the person thinks mm -hmm. and how things are run and how the thing the fact that we're a bitcoin a startup nation Man, on a startup, like, uh, everything is ideas. Everything is like, you know, like everything goes if it's good. And if there's someone to, to, to do it, uh, with the Bitcoin city, sure. It was a great, it is a great idea. And, um, the thing is that it just takes time man. like, because we actually want to, we, we don't want to just do a stupid web five, a metaverse, city in the middle of Central African mm. Republic. We actually want to build a fucking amazing city. And when we decided to do it in the place that we decided to do it, um, it was literally as soon as the idea came out, the idea was shown to the world. But when you want to build a city <coughs> next to a volcano where there is no there's nothing, man. Like, there's it's just, like, a few villages. And you need to do all kinds of studies. Hmm. All kinds of uh, uh, studies that are going to tell you the, if the earth is right to build on top of it. If there is a, sub, sub, uh, a river that you don't see, like, going in, sub, uh, under the ground or something. I don't know. There's, like, a billion things that can that need to be accounted for. And uh, and then there is the exploration for geothermal um, um, at activity, for geothermal possibilities of tapping into geothermal power. So without giving any specifics, the, the studies are pretty much done. Um, they, they show like, um, yeah, we can build there. And um, there's a bunch of geothermal everywhere in the country, man. There's like way more than we ever thought that it was. And um, that's amazing. Now, like, I mean, we, we still need to build a city that requires a um, bunch of, uh, well, once the studies are done, you need, well, first funding, of course, like uh, that's gonna, that's coming with the volcano bonds in some way or another, or maybe, I mean, there are many ways that we can do. We can build and destroy and rebuild bigger in many ways so right now let's say that we are in the stage of uh, of uh, just actually starting to build the things that are visual visual because you, doing the studies and doing the fact that um, also there's there's people that own that those those parts of the of the country right there's people that have like a, like a farm there or something like what we're we gonna do with that um, all of that is part of the building process, you know. 
is not just the actual uh, putting of stone over stone. Like we have to make sure that is uh, technically possible. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a go. Um, it's just, it's definitely going to take at least five years for, let's say, the first five, six years for the first, let's say, um, habitats, uh, livable places to start to actually like be livable. You know, there's a bunch of uh, plumbing. <laughs> plumbing, it's, it's a big thing. We want to get plumbing right. And plumbing in Salvador has not been right in a very long time. So um, little things, you know, like we, we genuinely want to build something uh, real, tangible, big, and build in the correct way. Mm -hmm. And that simply takes time. And so, but and yeah. How, how do you finance it? Well, the first idea was with the volcano bonds, right? Like, uh, I mean, that's that's one one option. Okay, maybe um, can you explain for the audience what are the volcano bonds? Yeah, what well, is the purpose? Oh, well, what is the bonds? Man, I have a nice story about the volcano bonds. Well, the thing with the bonds, well, a bond is an issue of that of a, of a sovereign nation. Or also, companies can issue issue bonds. So we're calling them the, the volcano bonds because we are the volcano country. And uh, the bonds are set to be issued on the Bitfinex platform and um, on liquid. And so... Liquid is a... Liquid is the, it's a, it's a side, it's the side chain of yeah. Bitcoin. Um, It makes things easier for certain things in certain ways. So, um, yeah, it's uh, an issuance of that for um, first, you know, first sovereign debt issued on the on the on the Bitcoin blockchain, and um, it's set to just uh, be a way of uh, getting liquidity to to do things like the Bitcoin City. There are many ways that you can build a city. Like, in the, in the, in, this is the exact thing that I, that it's very important to understand the startup mentality. Right now, we can be like, yeah, the, the country, the, the country can like, uh, can be like the one uh, building the, the, the infrastructure, or whatever, being public, but might as well be half public, half private. There can be like, um, I mean, like something hybrid, whatever works best. Right now, the, the idea is uh, the volcano bond thing might change. There might be uh, an offer to do to do it like in one way or another. Um, but everything is just pretty much what what I'm trying to say is that everything takes time. You know, even from a technical point of view, in a legal technical point of view, like writing law, it actually takes a very long time because it needs to be written in a very specific way. Because one go once it goes. It goes, so you better get it right the first time. Um, and so, yeah, so volcano bonds are coming. Bitcoin City is a go. It's going to take a few years. Um, but, yeah, I mean, there's a bunch of other uh, the projects that are, are, are running. Like, the, co the, the country has a, a semi-private, it's national and private uh, company called Volcano Bond. Volcano Bond. <laughs> Volcano Energy. Okay. Mm. Volcano Energy. Uh, through that company, we're doing a bunch of exploring for uh, geothermal, um, um, geothermal energy. What, what, because what, what you need to learn, what you need to explore when you're looking for geothermal, is pretty much like how, where there is like uh, volcano activity. You need to understand what's under the under the of the. Of, under the floor, like how deep there is a volcanic vein and, and the, how, what, what's the type of rock that is between the vein and the surface so you can drill on it. Mm. And so pretty much we found a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. And uh, geothermal energy is, is uh, cash intensive at first, like it requires a huge invest, investment at first, but then once everything is set up, it's pretty much free energy forever. So that can also explain why at first this, uh, we're going slow, but it looks slow, but we're going as fast as we can with things like uh, energy independency and uh, city creation and volcano bond issuance even. You know, we need to do it in the, in the, in the correct way. 
and at the right time also. Mm-hmm. But yeah, all of those projects are are still on 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 the on the table and like and they're just about to come out. So yeah. Okay. And um, there there were some um, some critics about the way you you're financing it by the FMI. FMI. AMF. IMF. IMF. And the IMF, IMF is criticizing us. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. So again, <laughs> <what's the IMF? laughs> um, yeah, I mean, all the nas- international economic authorities do, they're, they're like the devil, they're the devil. And, um, they have done and everything they can. And that, that's when I tell you that they, they don't work with, you know, under, under the law, they won't give you a contract saying something. Well, in this case, they would, but uh, they will first try to use their soft power to convince you to to do something a certain way. So they, um, yeah, they have done anything they can to stop us from from backing up from uh, from the Bitcoin uh, from our Bitcoin policy. Mm. But we won't. Like, I mean, we that's that's the thing. Like all the other jurisdictions that uh, I mentioned before, they backed off from. Uh, uh, from doing Bitcoin legal tender, and because the IMF, what they are is uh, their institutions. Their their goal is to endeavor poor nations to take control of them for higher uh, spheres of power. So we won't. We we won't. We simply we won't. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's what we're showing. Like we, we keep buying one Bitcoin out a day. It looks like a stairway to heaven, because IMF basically give you like free found, but it's a loan and you have to to uh, to pay it. Yeah, they but give you, loans. You you make it work forever, and it's getting bigger and bigger, and then, and you're getting enslaved to the yeah. to the dollars. That is basically. the circuit. That is yeah. the idea. That's what they do. Okay. Um, but actually, man, like we've been buying our own debt lately, and uh, it's been great. Like uh, we're we're way less indebted than we were, and um, yeah, I mean we're gonna get debt free. We're gonna be the first country, the first nation in the world to be debt free, because we we have so much Bitcoin, man, and we just keep buying more. It's insane. We have more Bitcoin than Germany. Hmm. Uh, I mean, pretty much like everyone. everyone. <laughs> But, you know, per capita, we have the most Bitcoin. And, uh, dude, like, it's, it's just going to be amazing. Do you think we will stop to buy Bitcoin no. somewhere? No. Even at $1 million per Bitcoin? No. no. <laughs> Never? No. We'll buy one Bitcoin forever sure. until you have them all. <laughs> until we have them all. That's correct. We, ha- we want the monopoly on Bitcoin. <laughs> and... Uh, you need to talk with Sailor. With Sailor. Yeah. Nah, we will... Yes. We will we own will, sailor. We will own sailor. We will <laughs> own micro strategy. That's it. That's the thing. Like he hasn't like noticed me. Maybe he, he noticed one day what's the allocation of El Salvador shares in the micro strategy. Who knows? Um, yeah, we will keep buying. Um, we also will never sell. Yeah. Uh, we haven't sold anything. You know, first of all, yeah. like the the five thousand eight hundred and something bitcoins that you see in the. Um, bitcoinoffice.gov.sb mm. um, it's just the, the public Bitcoin that we hold like, I mean we receive uh, we sell passports for one million dollars and they pay with Bitcoin and we do not use that Bitcoin we just hodl that's all we do That we hodl so what's the point of uh, just holding uh, Bitcoin What's the point? Yeah. <laughs> well, well, what we get fucking about. rich, man. That's the point. That's the fucking point. So at uh, one point, you, you're just waiting for the hyper Bitcoinization of the world, and then you, you would be able, like, to to use them truly Dude. for exchange between a uh, like, nation. Or? I mean, I don't know. What's that's the strategy, the future, man? That's the future. We only huddle. Now, I personally use Bitcoin because, like, I mean, that's all I have. And I live in Bitcoin country, so everything is Bitcoin there. But then at the nation state level, we huddle. And, and what's the usage of huddling? Well, to have all the Bitcoin you can, to have self sovereignty, to, to, to be able to say, fuck the IMF. That's literally the reason why we huddle, to fuck the IMF and to fuck Christine Lagarde and Jerome Powell. That is the reason 
why we hollow. Maybe that why that's why there are criticism criti- criticism. Oh of the, man, like they will criticize salad. their own mom if they don't give them like uh, the know. breakfast in the morning. Like they 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 they're just like this, you know. They're bitching around the whole day. Like they will criticize us if 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 we did something different. Just, mm. yeah. yeah, for sure. And uh, I I have one one question. I, I don't know if you have the answer. Do you have any feedbacks on what? Uh, Because um, we saw Javier Millet came into Salvador discu- uh, chatting with Bukele. Yeah. And do you know if Argentina or will, do, will learn something from Salvador at the Bitcoin? We hope. Um, Argentina has very different problems. They're fucked. And they've but been fucked for like 10 years or something. Way more, actually. They have very deep problems. And... Uh, Sadly, they cannot afford to do what we're doing um, in in the same way. Like we had more room to play. Argentina has absolute hyper hyper inflation, and uh, I mean it's it comes down to Millet himself. Like he's going to be the one that has to be creative enough to to come up with a solution, and if he's going to do Bitcoin or not, like he should. But you know. I, at the end of the day is, is his choice is his country is his mm. people so I mean who knows at this point who mm. knows like I mean who knows about Trump like what the fuck like, mm. you know like the, the last three days with Trump like I don't know I don't know yeah yeah, yeah. But, but in fact I think in, in Argentina you can you can transact in Bitcoin it's not illegal but it's not yeah, the guess, legal yeah. tender yeah. so yeah but I think they're also transacting on other cheat coins so yeah Yeah, it's um, basically free banking. Yeah, it's free banking, yeah. Mm. You can transact with whatever you want. Yeah. And mm. yeah, it could be a model. Yeah, f- from the beginning, we've been discussing about uh, our Salvadorian willing to be free or not. Is it, is it, will it be coming from the top or not? And there were also like recently um, a video coming from uh, Oh. Like an official one saying that uh, Nayib Bukele wanted to like uh, force or coerce mm-hmm. the, mm-hmm. the the yeah, the very company, official. Like, to, it was him yeah, saying uh, like to, to to fix the the price of yeah. some uh, product. Yeah. What, what what is the your thought your thought on this? Well, you know, um, I don't have much thoughts of on on the video itself more than in the reaction of the Bitcoiners, because mm. it's the thing that I told you at first, they don't care enough. When you don't care enough about something, you're just going to read the headline or just going to like watch the video. And like, I mean, of course, I can, I can at least understand how that video without any context, which all Europeans have no context on it, just by watching it can like get diverge into like, yeah, it's price control. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, you need to understand like three things, you know, when, 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 when it comes to that video, um, that video was definitely intended for those Salvadoreños mostly, you know, like, because the president sometimes, uh, he can be international. He can tweet something from safely into the Bitcoiners, but he's still my president. You know, he, he needs to address things to my public, to the public of El Salvador. So the video was about the fact that there is these people that are speculating about the price of certain vegetables based on uh, predictions, economical predictions that are might happen or might not happen or might or might not become true in like a couple of years from now. And why he said like that he was threatening these, uh, these people that they, they had to uh, lower the prices by the, by the next morning if they didn't want to have any problem is because In El Salvador, there is a monopoly on the supermarket and they control all the means of production and all the means of transportation of this type of product. So pretty much like three people sitting in a room can define how much a tomato costs. That's what it means. So, and they were like, uh, the, well, the critics were saying that that was no free market, whatever, but yet yeah, we don't have free market. We have a monopoly on free market. So it's not like I can go to the supermarket and be like, I don't want to buy that tomato for three three dollars i have to so that was that was the thing due to the fact that there is a monopoly on the on the on the on the on the discovery of money 
like uh, he was literally addressing those three human beings that have that power because they have committed crimes before, economical crimes. And we are not focusing on fixing those crimes now or, or account them for those crimes right now. So he was like, look, you are, you know, you have done things before and that you can go to jail for, or you can be fined for. So, so you, you, you either start putting a rightful price right now, or we're going to go after you right now. So, so that was the threat. Okay. And of course it sounds like price, price control. But you know what I mean? Like they have the farm in Nicaragua and Honduras and in Guatemala and they buy it themselves and they sell it in El Salvador for, um, for very high prices. That's what it meant. And that's the same thing with Bitcoin. Um, at by the next day, the, the minister of agriculture, Oscar, what up? He, he had been working for like a year now in this I, that's one of the most difficult words in English for me, huerto. It's the garden that you have in your, where, where you grow your own vegetables. Things are, I don't know in English. But, so he had been promoting these things in communities. And now he had already a bunch of communities creating these vegetables by themselves. So he created this market. He's a um, community, um, He's a uh, free markets, you know, like uh, everybody can grab the vegetables that they grow themselves and they go sell them. So that was the solution, you know, like, of course, we need better prices, but we also need to provide with solutions. The solution is vegetables at a cheap price, quality vegetables grown by your neighbor. And so that was one of the solutions. Now, also, the, these monopolies lower their prices quite a lot. That helped. Now, um, you know, so that, that, that's the story pretty much. It's literally just an out of context, mm. like perception of things. Uh, and that's the thing. Um, and that's the thing with Bitcoin. We do not force it in the law says that anybody has to accept. Um, Bitcoin is a, you can pay a debt or a service with Bitcoin and blah, 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 like the same as all any other legal tender. But there is a clause that says, if the person accepting Bitcoin is obviously technically incapable of managing it, it has no, no, it's not forced to. And also, like based on the explanation of the startup nation, I have to explain also that we do not um, execute certain things. We, 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 we promote the common sense of execution of law. So if a police person catches up someone smoking weed, weed is illegal in, the, in El Salvador, uh, but it's, it's, uh, at some level it's uh, decriminalized in some level. So if it's a small, a small quantity, it just gets uh, confiscated and, you know, don't smoke weed, you know. Um, and the same with, uh, with uh, we'll say, Bitcoin. Uh, you don't want to accept Bitcoin. Okay, that's fine. I mean, we, we are waiting for the free market capitalism to adopt Bitcoin. Bitcoin is legal tender. We're not forcing anyone to accept Bitcoin, except the banks. We tried to force the banks to accept Bitcoin. It didn't work. Why? Because banks are dollarized and the banking system in the world was made in such a way that actually the Federal Reserve of the United States and all the their correspondent banks for these banks in El Salvador um, have way more to say about how the bank is run than the government of El Salvador. I mean, of course, we want banks to accept Bitcoin and to allow Bitcoin companies to have banking services. But, um, I mean, we also don't want the fucking collapse of the banking system. If we force them, like, with a put up a gun, you know, like, accept Bitcoin and they start accepting it, they get caught of their SWIFT, they, they, their correspondent banks stop relationships, and then we cannot do shit. We don't have bank uh, banks anymore because mm. the banks are nothing without their correlated banks and mm. with the with the swift access. Access, but everything is changing. You know, we're we're doing the new law. So, so uh, what is the solution right now to to hold your Bitcoin except with your own wallet? Is is there any like? Uh, 
something like Fedimint or things like this, or do you have a new bank starting from the the Salvadorian? What is the solution for holding Bitcoin? Well, well, in, even in the law says that the government has to provide a solution for an easy holdage. Well, it's Chivo, it's Chivo wallet. Yeah. Chivo wallet is not as, uh, it pretty much works like a bank and it's not perfect. It's being redone right now and, uh, it's getting better. It's a uh, non, it's a custodial way of having Bitcoin. You are just exposed to Bitcoin. It's not really Bitcoin, of course. It's, it's just your bank holding Bitcoin for you as a national wallet. Okay, so um, we like still need to uh, wallet of Satoshi. Yeah, more fiat even because it's it's a government one. Yeah. But it's a, it has ATMs. You can withdraw a thousand dollars. It's it's ruled by the ATM law in the country. One thousand dollars out. Um, yeah, it works. You know, like for the intents and purposes of of of, of it, it works. Then you can have obviously any other any other wallet, and you know it will be protected and uh, recognized as, as as Bitcoin, of course, at the legal level. Um, yeah, and, uh, there's a few national world well, Salvadoran companies creating this type of things. Blink, mm-hmm. uh, Tianki, D2 Banks. Um, they all different, you know. They have different uh, market shares of. Uh, they they do different uh, solutions. Mm-hmm. And yeah, we're also incentivizing any other wallet company that wants to move to El Salvador. We have uh, free taxes for 15 years. And um, also importations are free of uh, taxes. Um, for If you develop something, if you need to import something uh, technological for your for your company. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So t- to conclude uh, about this topic, if, uh, if I understand well... Um, you are not uh, forcing people and company to adopt Bitcoin to follow what the state. No, wants. Bitcoin you doesn't are, need that. Yeah, like Bitcoin just, doesn't, need, doesn't need El Salvador. Yeah, you just put so. in place some rule, uh, some law to yeah. allow people to use Bitcoin. You you encourage them, but you are not forcing because on our perspective abroad in Europe, some some people are seeing it as yeah you are forcing. You you cannot do anything. <laughs> really, they are saying that about El Salvador. Yeah, really? there there is some some uh, some documentary. Uh, there is a famous uh, channel in France that made a, a documentary on El Salvador, and they said, uh, look, and it was maybe one year or two years ago. So, uh-huh. and they said, uh, look, no one is using Bitcoin. Yeah, like five <laughs> months after the law. Yeah, yeah. And uh, they're saying, yeah, no one is using it. They don't care. Yeah, that's normal. They, they, they say, yeah, yeah, yeah. They <laughs> don't give a fuck. <laughs> like, I mean, El Salvador was not full of Bitcoiners. Didn't I, didn't you hear the thing that I said when I said that I was the only Bitcoiner for like a decade and I couldn't find Bitcoiners? El Salvador was not a Bitcoiners country. The president, he was was a Bitcoiner, and he created the possibility for Bitcoin to legally and protectedly and in a, in, a, in, a, in a rightful way, go to El Salvador. So Bitcoiners and Orange Pill, everyone. We have an Orange Pill program. This is an Orange Pill, you know, like this Plan B network. That's cool plus. We're Orange Pilling. It's a process. You remember when you told your mom your first time that, that Bitcoin was a thing? What did she say? You know what she said. We all know. We all know what mm-hmm. she said, right? So that's the same thing, you know. I have like a two million moms in El Salvador. I'm, I have to spend like a few years orange peeling them. Man. It's not going to yeah. be like that. And they are the ones that accept the Bitcoin. They are the ones that make the pupusas. So it's, it's a process. And it's working very well. But, you know, like if you want to, if you want to go to the orange peeling Olympics, go to El Salvador and orange peel three people. Like, what are you doing? What are you waiting for? Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. yeah. And, and yeah. And, w- and one more thing. Um, in Salvador, uh, most of the people are, are poorer than in Europe, so they don't yeah, have different. the same. Yeah, yeah it's different. That, that's also something very important. The thing that I'm realizing here in Europe, in general, is that Bitcoin is not taken as serious as it is in El Salvador, mm. because here Bitcoin is a hobby. Bitcoin is, uh, yeah, sure, whatever, man. Like it's a hobby type of thing. For us, it's national policy. We have officials like me being bitcoin officials bitcoin we have bitcoin diplomats as we have bitcoin embassies we're going to make and so 
And so the reality of, of my people having less expendable money, uh, it reflects in the fact that Bitcoin for us is uh, it's, it's not something that you're going to put $500 in. $500 is like two months payment or something for some people, I guess. Mm. It's uh, Bitcoin, it's not a means to, to play with. Bitcoin is a means to your government to be better off, to, to support your future better. That's first. Then if you get a better job, if, you, if your kids get educated better, they'll become a part of Google Plus program. Uh, Bitcoin companies will hire them. They will collaborate with Plan Me Network. And... And Bitcoin is going to make your country's life better. But it's difficult for someone in a solar to put $500 worth of Bitcoin in something. So for some people, it's, even, it's difficult to have a smartphone and download the Chivo app where you can buy one dollar in Bitcoin. So these are not people that really live their lives t reading books about economics and, and realizing how mag magnificent of a thing Bitcoin is. They live their lives trying to survive every 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 day and it's so much better now like the percentage of, of poverty it's like it's dropping dramatically but we were in the worst place that you could imagine so moving towards a place where you can start looking at bitcoin in a more in a more in a more different way it's uh, it's it's also going to take the same way that bitcoin city is going to take a few years okay. we're in the process of that and we're going as fast as possible if we went faster, it would be dangerous, genuinely dangerous. Yeah, and you are the first state of the history to separate money and the state. <laughs> exactly. You know, that's the thing with the president, Bukele. He, he's the president, and he is giving power back to the people. He's giving, he's, he, you know, like, we, of course, we don't have a monetary policy because we, we always use the U.S. dollar. But he's even more than that. By, reckon, by making big, Bitcoin legal tender and for their existing uh, Bitcoin office, we are recognizing everybody's right to, to have sovereignty in a way that it can be blocked by the state. Because we can still tell the bank to, to block your bank account, you know, if, if, if we don't like you. But we cannot do that with Bitcoin. If Bitcoin means more than just monetary policy. It's a, whole, it's a whole way of living. It's a philosophy. It's a way of eating. It's a way of baking. It's a way of uh, cooking steak. You know, like, that's what we're all about, like, steak. We're bringing Wagyu beef to El Salvador. We're going to raise Wagyu cows in El Salvador. We're, we're going to make uh, seed oils impossible to use because we're going to have way cheaper coconut oil. We're going we're gonna to run the, the seed oil mafia out of El Salvador. We're going we're gonna, to gonna nice fuck them off. Yeah, <laughs> we're literally doing that. My, 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 the Bitcoin office, my office is... a. Uh, It's, a, it's an office of Bitcoin, coconut, and <laughs> Wagyu meat. That's what we do. Like, oh, those please. three things. Like, stop thinking about your only Bitcoin is coconut meat. <laughs> Maybe it's the best conclusion. Hotels is next also. Yeah, yeah actually, I need to get hired hotels. by you. <laughs> I, I know. Like, legit, like... Yeah, actually, I was with Theo. I wanted to hire Theo. Like, to like, motherfucker knows how to get things done, and, That, that's what the, th the thing to do. And also, like, I want to uh, acknowledge that I follow, because I'm in Paris, I'm, a, I'm acknowledging the Parisian rules of fashion that I was told by yesterday by Max Kaiser. He told me to wear only three colors and to not wear socks. So I'm wearing my Bitcoin <laughs> shoes and no socks. Let me see, like, where is that? Because the frame yeah. is not there. Those are Bitcoin shoes made only in El Salvador, in El Sonte, and no socks, man. Why? I don't know. Like, I'm just following the rules of Parisian fashion. So we, we, we have socks. <laughs> yeah, like, we do have. We are not following the rules. I, I was, yeah, I mean, like, I, it's I guess only two color. <laughs> I was, I was misled, uh, apparently, by, by, yeah. by, by the high priest, but you know, who knows? Yeah. yeah. Thanks a lot for uh, the discussion. Maybe yeah, it was a great time. Yeah. Maybe yeah, next time we know. want to do it in El Salvador. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Like, like they kicked us out of, of the gardens of Luxembourg, man. Like, they <laughs> yeah. they won't kick us out of Bitcoin office or the, of the Bitcoin beach or of the pal presidential palace, man. We, we're gonna find something nice. If you go in November, I'll get you a nice place to to record okay. with all the whole view of like the. We try. Yeah. We'll try to to come for for adopting Bitcoin. Of course. Yeah. yeah. 
Dude, right? we're gonna have so much. It's gonna be awesome. This adopt in Bitcoin. If you're not, if you're not going to Salvador, who gives a fuck about Miami or like Sacramento? Like, go to adopt in Bitcoin in Salvador, man. Like, it's gonna be even better than. Don't tell them that I said that, but it's gonna be even way better than plan before in Milan. Like, uh, are the tickets see. already available? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, if the, if Salvador, the, Salvadorians don't buy tickets, so uh, I okay. don't know. Yeah, it's it's raining in Lugano in, in October, man. Like it's, it's cold and it's rainy in El Salvador. It's sunshine the whole the whole year. So yeah, it's yeah. gonna be awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mario. Thank, Thank you. you. Man. It was great. See you. Don't forget to subscribe, like this video, share it, and follow the Bitcoin. Yeah. Follow the money. Ciao. <laughs> cool, awesome. <laughs>